Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of painting She's Like a Rainbow. Over the years, I've been able to work with many fine and talented people as an art teacher. Even luckier is when these people become my friends, and long after the, the art lessons stop, the people continue to be friends of mine. That's been a real benefit of being an art teacher for many years. This was the photograph taken by one of my friends, and I stopped by her Facebook page to see how she was doing with her new house. I happened to see this beautiful picture that she'd taken of herself or a friend had taken for her and asked her if I could copy it as an inspiration for a painting. And she said yes. So this will be my video of how I went about doing this. I had an idea. My idea was to combine my love of drawing with my love of painting watercolor. I pictured painting her hair in beautiful colors and yet having some fun with drawing and rendering her face with shading. I wanted to have a lot of white shine in her hair as well as texture. So I began with an ink pen and masking fluid. This is Peebo masking fluid, and it was working quite well with my ink pen. Masking fluid doesn't always work for me, but in this case, I'm randomly drawing lines and textures and patterns in her hair. This will have to dry before I can then proceed with paint. Next, I got her features sketched in. found her face underneath the hair, and got out my drawing pencils, which are in different hardnesses from very soft and dark to very pale and light. I started in with medium turns, sketched the lines, and then began to shade and render the shadows and the planes of her face. As a person who's been drawing her entire life. This was a lot of fun and a departure from all of the watercolor painting I've been doing recently. I really do like to draw and I really do enjoy showing shading. What I was just doing was getting some salt ready to sprinkle on after I painted the watercolor. And what I'm doing now is putting water all over her hair. I'm avoiding the face and just putting the water on the hair. I'm doing this so the paint will go on loose and will spread and flow. I'm painting whatever colors I feel like painting and I'm not really worrying about it. But this is a palette that I use that I call my magic colors because I think they're very pretty and they feel like magical fairyland to me. The yellow tends to mix with the Quinn magenta and make some beautiful orange colors as well. The blues and the turquoises and the teal greens all mix as well. And then I'm adding some purple. The blue and the Quinn magenta also mixed together to make a beautiful purple. Where the hair was in shadow, I tended to make the paint a little darker because I wanted both light, shiny areas and more depth in some darker areas. And I'm applying the paint quite concentrated so that it will remain bright. When I was done with the paint, I sprinkled on some salt for some texture. Now here I'm testing out my pencils to see how dark I want to go. The hair has dried and I'm beginning to do some more intense shading on the facial features.
As an artist, I started out with drawing, and I'm sure many of you have did, done the same. Drawing is a first love, and the pencil gives you a lot of control as you learn to use it more and more realistically or in whatever manner you're trying to use it. You'll get more and more experience and more confidence. Drawing is just always a pleasure for me. I had to make a choice about what I wanted to draw and what I wanted to paint. So I decided to do her skin in pencil shading with the graphite approach and do the hair and the shirt in watercolor. One of the best tips I can give for shading in pencil is to try to imagine or find a light source in your subject. And wherever the sunlight or the room light is falling on the person or the subject matter, the person will be lighter. And where the light is not reaching, the person will be darker. And when I do a detailed shaded drawing like this, I try to get rid of any lines and make all the subject in pl into planes and shades and shapes as opposed to a line drawing. At this point, the hair had faded, so I go back and add some more intense coloring in the hair. And then I'm erasing where I smudged up the drawing. And I had to erase a good bit because I wanted my lights to be very light and not smudgy gray. And I wanted my darks to be quite dark. These lovely little erasers were given to me by another art student and friend, and they have just been invaluable. And that particular student went on to become a professional graphic artist. And I'm sure she knew all the right tools to use that I never found out. So I've shaded a good part of the face. I'm working on the hand. And then I start in on the shirt. Now I noticed at this point that the proportions of the body were somewhat off. And I think it's because the camera distorted the photograph of the person. So I had to do a lot of adjusting on this particular shoulder and arm. And when I thought I knew what I was doing, I had to go back and fix it several times. To the point where I was not copying my drawing, but rather using my judgment about what was right in reality and not just from a distortion of the camera and the subject. I'm trying to paint the shirt in with some folds and some shadows and that will be changed somewhat too. This is an experimental painting. I'm having fun. I'm trying something new. I've never done this particular approach before. And every painting that I experiment with and try, teach me something new about art. One of the reasons it's such an exciting thing. Now, if you look closely, you'll say, she has her arm showing on the right side and she doesn't in this paint, this drawing right now. And you'd be right. I do go back and change the arm around as part of my adjustment. Here I'm painting more hair in, random colors, and just putting it where it looks good to me. And I was having a lot of fun. I 
I've made the left arm, on the left side rather, much wider at this point and it looked more proportionate. And I'm tightening up the color along the arm to make the arm stand out from the top. And now I'm lifting color to make the other arm. I'm painting on with water and then blotting off. I'm trying to be gentle because I don't want to disturb the paper. But I got most of the paint lifted to the point where I wanted it lifted. I'm darkening my shadows with a fairly soft pencil. And I'm slowly building up the color with the pencil to make it darker and darker in layers. And in between, I'm painting hair. Now we're at the point where I'm doing a lot of minute adjustment, adding small details, erasing smudges, back and forth and back and forth. My subject had some beautiful and artistically done flowers tattooed on her arms. So my challenge at this point was to figure out how to try to draw them and shade them and make them look somewhat realistic and not just like a line drawing. To do them credit for whoever the tattoo artist was who did such a lovely job. So I had begun to sketch the left tattoo side. And now I'm focusing my attention on the right side. The heavy shadows add some nice accent to her skin and to her hair at that point. I shade out the arm and the skin of the arm and then I begin to try to draw the tattoo on the other side. My best trick that I learned with this was to draw it with a thicker line and then smudge the line. And then go back and erase within so it would stand out but the line wouldn't look so drawn on but rather part of the tattoo on her skin. And then I went back and darkened it at a later point as well. Now I'm at the fun part. I'm taking off the masking in her hair. So what you'll see is very strong white lines appearing all over her hair where the masking fluid had been painted. I take it off with an eraser by erasing it, and I'm also taking it off with my finger by rubbing. It makes a lot of little messy eraser type things, and they go all over the place. Masking is uh, not exactly a convenient thing to do, but it really does work. The longer you leave it on, though, the harder it is to get off. 
and every little bit has to come off so you don't have little bumpy dark things all over the the painting. Now after taking off the masking, my next thing to do was to blend it in artistically with her hair as painted. So the lines didn't look quite so stark, but rather looked like an interesting patterned part of the overall art piece. So I'm doing a lot of soft blending with a damp brush and blotting. I'm also actually shading some of the areas. I will paint where there is paint. That will lift a little paint, it will mix with the water on my brush and create soft shadows. Every once in a while I find a little area where I did not get all the masking fluid off and you'll see me rubbing that with my finger to get it off. But I'm blending the different sections. I'm adding some color where there was too much white. And I'm adding some strands of hair here and there. This took a while. There was no real pattern or approach to follow. I was sort of making it up as I went. And I just relied on what looked good to my eye. Again, this was an experiment. And when I experiment, one of the reasons I do that is to have fun. And I really did have a lot of fun with this painting. I'm continuing to adjust to blend the whites in the hair. And I'm continuing to add a little more color to the hair where it seemed to have faded too much. I'm also going back into the skin areas with darker pencils and enhancing the intensity of my pencil shading. I'm building up the shadows so they'll be a little darker and do some good accent work in some areas. I'm also continuing to work back and erase where I've smudged. At this point, I'm using my brush to wipe off the erasing mess. Because if I start to use my hand and my hand is a little damp, I could smudge everything all up again. So using the brush is a very good way to take off the erasing mess. Each time I return to this painting over the course of the week or so that it took me to paint it, I find that I need to intensify the color of the hair a little bit more. And so I continue to do that and build up more glazes or layers on the hair until it looks just right to me.
And yes, this is a lot of adjusting on the hair, on the skin, even on the fingernails where I've erased shine marks to show her nail polish is shiny. Just as a side note, if you ever do a tattoo on a person, make sure that you curve the picture of the tattoo along with their skin curvature so the tattoo looks like it's naturally following the contours of their skin and not just a flat thing. This is my evaluation technique to see where I need to brighten, adjust, or accent. I cover side to side and sometimes top to bottom and see what needs to be brought out more. And sometimes what needs to be taken off because it's too much. Getting close to the end. I find a good place, I sign it, and it's done. I hope you enjoyed my video, She's Like a Rainbow, and how I painted it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. There's also links below to click on, and they will take you to my art page on Facebook, my blog about art and life. They'll take you to some products that I use to create art and also to my own art products page for people to purchase prints and other items with my artwork on. Your comments are always welcome, and I'll see you next video. Bye!